Hi, I'm Keena Nisley with Life of the Land is in its Real Estate on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams. And today I, my guest is Ron Salvador, who is a global instructor for the cash flow game from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So welcome, Ron. Aloha, aloha. How are you guys doing? Hey, I'm so glad you're here with us. So today we are going to talk about um, fear versus opportunity. But first, why don't you tell people about what you do? And, and I always think it's really exciting what you get to do. You know, what's interesting the, that we're actually talking like the whole subject matter is called fear versus opportunity because uh, how I got involved with this whole thing. And I've been traveling around the world for the past 12 years teaching uh, a board game basically is uh, it's if you ever heard of the book rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki um i actually teach the board game based off of that book and actually it's actually reversed the book is based off of that board game um and what it is is it's kind of like monopoly but it teaches you in a way that monopoly doesn't in it and it, it teaches you the fundamentals of how money works um and i came across this concept and this philosophy by you know i was myself in a pretty dire situation. Um, I was working for the largest newspaper company in the state of Hawaii. And I thought I was set because, you know, hey, can't go wrong with the biggest company, right? And that was what I was taught to do. But this company actually went down. And that's when um, a lot of fear uh, went into. So my whole journey with this subject matter started with, with tons of fear. We were all afraid. Um, everybody in, in, in my company were scrambling for the scraps, whatever was left, and, and people were even willing to backstab each other uh, just to, to get what was left. And, and it wasn't until I came across this book and, and the concepts from this game that all of a sudden that fear didn't become my enemy. It actually became my friend. And uh, for the past 12 years, I've been traveling around the world teaching these concepts. I started myself as a real estate investor. Um, I, my first uh, investment property was an eight bedroom, five bath house um, that cash flowed for me uh, $1,200 a month. And for me, that was a big deal. It was a lot of money. Um, it told me, it just showed me that I could do something. And it was actually something that I, I did here in Hawaii, which people were saying, you know, can't be done. And, um, you know, of course, back then, it, it was also a lot of fear uh, just going into that because uh, I had never invested in real estate before. And I went from, I think it was like $30,000 in consumer debt to now over almost three, $400,000 because I had a mortgage now and everything. So, you know, just taking on that, that whole mindset was, uh, was scary, but it was good debt. So um, it was something that I started to understand better. And if you're an investor, you're a real estate investor and things like that, you start to understand, I mean, you guys know this already, that you want to actually take on more debt, which most people who don't do this um, think all debt is bad debt and they're afraid of it. So just on that point alone, I think it's an important uh, aspect in this uh, show as well. Great. So let's, let's go back a little further. So did, did you grow up here in Oahu and... and I did. I grew. I, a lot of my life, I've lived here in Oahu. Um, however, I'm I'm a military brat. My father was a U.S. Marine, and so we traveled in different places. I grew up uh, in Georgia, and North Carolina. I went to high school in Okinawa, Japan. I was actually born in the Philippines, but uh, 22 years out of my life, I would say maybe 24 years now, 24, 25 years out of my life, I've lived here in the islands. Okay. So if there's any place I consider home, it would be here in Hawaii. All right. So, so great. Yeah. So it shows that, you know, you didn't come from a background of real estate investors, real estate minded, investor minded, and, and you still you took the leap. So right now we are seeing a lot of fear in the market. Nobody quite knows where it's going to go. Um, so what, what do you think people should wait and see, take the wait and see approach or, or what should they be doing? You know, the, the interesting thing, about being a real estate investor is that if you are investing in, your, um, in anything actually, not just real estate, you're actually in a different mindset from uh, the employee-minded people. And employee-minded people and investors almost think opposite. See, employee-minded people don't wanna risk anything. They uh, want a safe, secure job. They want security. 
uh, whereas investors actually look to put themselves at risk. You know, they put money up at risk and they look for opportunity for reward by putting up some risk. So it's a, it's a completely opposite thinking. So, so, you know, if you just look at the context of that, then what the majority of people are doing, which are the employees out there, and, you know, majority of people are employees, um, we have a small population of investors and investor-minded people, then you're going to actually want to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. And what everybody else is doing is freezing. They're fleeing and they're flying and they're, you know, uh, going all over, panicking. And uh, that's because that's what, you know, that world is about. It, you, know, this, you know, it's a lot of fear. Just like I said, when I was working for the newspaper company and they were la laying off people left and right, there was tons of fear and everybody started to shrink. But in this time, in these times, um, it's actually as an investor minder, minded person or an, an entrepreneurial minded person, this is a time to seek out the opportunities and expand. This is actually for those people and for us, it's the best time. So what are some opportunities that, that you think people, you know, you talk about, oh, there's opportunities. I, I don't think our viewers probably know what those opportunities are. What, what kind of things are opportunities that we look well, for as investors? Well, see, here's the thing is that as an investor, you know, and, and really what I promote, especially all over the world, is an entrepreneurial mindset. And an entrepreneurial mindset is a creative mindset. This is a person that doesn't, not uh, doesn't necessarily need or want anyone to ne always tell them what to do and i'm not here to tell you actually what to do but one of the things that i can tell you that i was trained to do is to to educate myself and to seek out more knowledge as to what's available see here's the here's the thing that that i absolutely love about the game that i teach is like i said it's a simple board game and kino you've played it with us um the beautiful thing about the board game the, the cash flow game and it's a it's a simulation of real life and it act, absolutely applies to real life is that everything that you need to win the game to be financially free to to get out of the rat race however you want to call it um is available to you it's right in front of your face the problem is is that most people don't see it most people don't understand it and, and a lot of times, and I've seen you do this as well, playing the game, you know, you know and this is okay. You know, a lot of, a lot of the greatest opportunities, you, you, you look at it and you almost don't know what to do with it and you just put it, put it down. And see, the beautiful thing about, you know, the progression of doing something like playing the game or, or, or actually doing the game in real life is that the more action, the more you do it, the more you talk about it, the more you study it, the more you play it, the more mistakes you make on it, the more you'll get better at it and the more you'll see. So, you know, even you, like, for example, well, if you don't mind, you know, I'll use your yeah, example what? as a cash flow player. <laughs> You're a pretty horrible cash flow player in the beginning, weren't you? I know, I scared you. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was pretty amazed at how horrible you were. But, it, you know, what's, what's great about that, though, because, you know, it, 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 actually, it actually does reflect real life, is that things that you don't understand, Things, you know, opportunities that you don't understand and that you, you may not see because you don't understand, you put, a, put down or you, you pass up or you don't see. But the more you stay with it, the more you stay in the mix, the more it makes you understand. I'll give you a clear example of my first investment property. Um, I didn't understand real estate. I, I, I took a real, one of those three-day real estate courses in Waikiki. I remember I was so excited. I was like, oh, man, we're all going to be like Donald Trump. And... <laughs> You know, I got, you know, this is how low my real estate investing experience was. I got excited seeing the for sale sign across the street of my house in uh, here in Kailua. Because just because it was for sale, I thought, oh man, this is going to be my first property. Not understanding the numbers, not understanding how it works. And then of course, you know, you know, of course I was like, well, it's just right across the street of my house. Let me go ahead and make an offer, offer on it. Uh, when I finally broke down the numbers, especially here in Kailua, especially in my neighborhood, yeah, the numbers didn't work at all, at all. They were horrible. As a matter of fact, I would have lost a ton of money if I, uh, if I pursued this particular property. And it made me realize that there was still so much for me to, to, to understand, but that the more that I did it 
And I'm not the fastest student. I'm actually a pretty slow student. I'm, I'm, pre I'm pretty horrible at this game in real life. Although the one thing about me is I'm pretty tenacious and I don't stop. I kept at it. And it took about two years. I was just in it all, all, all the time. I was in masterminds. I was out there looking at properties. And finally, I started. it started to make sense to me what properties were good and which ones were for my my taste for my abilities and for my uh, my reach uh, that I could do, and and see here's the thing about about opportunities is that they're right in front of your face and and literally money and opportunity is flying right in front of your face. The problem, just like in the game, is that most people don't see it. I mean, when it comes to opportunity, first of all, number one, you have to see it, and number two, you have to be prepared to be able to take it. And, and my advice, if I were to give any advice, because I'm not a financial advisor, is that if right now you're feeling fear, then it's because there's an unknown out there. It's kind of like the fear of the dark. You know, you don't know. What, it's not necessarily what's in the dark that scares most people. It's what they think is in the dark. But the minute you turn on the lights in the room, all of a sudden you see every obstacle in the room and then you're able to traverse the room. And so... You know, what I would say for everybody who's feeling a lot of fear, and it's understandable that you feel fear this time, is to turn on the lights. And the best way to turn on the lights is to take action and at minimum, stay connected. Stay connected to the sources of information. Find out what's going on. The reason why most people fail at the cash flow game, not only the board, but the cash flow game in real life, is because they don't know under, they don't understand the rules they don't understand the strategies by which to play the game and to win. A lot of people are, you know, playing this game of, you know, cash flow, and they think that it's baseball, but it's actually football. And you can, and, you know, in baseball, you're to, you know, score a home run and everything like that. But if the whole goal is to score a touchdown with a team, with pads and all that kind of stuff, and you show up to a game with a bat, you're going to get clobbered. You know, so learn the rules of the game, get the proper equipment, make sure that you're on a proper team and, and then play the game uh, properly. So um, for people with fear, uh, again, it's because the, their lights aren't turned on, on enough. You know, I've been in this for about, you know, maybe 15 years working with Robert Kiyosaki. He's been talking about this moment. And if you, if you research, like look him up on YouTube and look at some of his videos, He's still talking about it. He's been talking about it for a long time. So, you know, during this time, actually, that hasn't been very scary for me. I understand it is for a lot of people, um, but we've been preparing for these, these these moments. We've been preparing for this time. And I can honestly say that I didn't realize that what, what it actually meant. I've been here inside the house. We, you know, we have our rental properties too. We're actually renovating one right now, getting it ready to rent. Um, but this has been such an exciting time. I didn't realize how exciting it could be just being stuck at home. But I've been do doing my research, been doing my due diligence. I've actually come across a lot more money these days than when I was actively out there traveling around the world and, and talking to a whole bunch of people. It's just amazing to me. So um, for, for you guys out there, I would say stay connected. Find out from, from you know, the people that you know, your resources. You'll be surprised what you see. There's a lot of opportunity. And, and the traditional things that you were thinking of, of ways to invest may still be there they but they may be in other ways and other angles and other you know resources you might have to do some lateral thinking because the opportunities are presenting themselves they just not might not be presenting themselves in the way the conventional way that you're thinking so what are some ways that you are are turning your light on um education where are you finding ways to get that light and get that clarity well, see, here's the here, here's the here's the, uh, the 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 beautiful thing about the the age that we live in. I mean, the, even this Zoom call in itself, um, when we for we were just trying to set this up, my computer was glitching. It I, for for some reason it was freezing. I couldn't get on it. But the beautiful thing is that my smartphone still works, and so you know, just set it up, turn it on, plugged it in, and here we are on the Zoom car. We're ready to go. Um, you know, that, that's the beautiful thing about, about the age we live in. The technology that we have is that your reach is as far as you want to take it. You know, the internet and everything, 
all that information is out there. You don't even need to leave your house. It's all available. I mean, just going on YouTube, taking in multiple sources and stuff like that, staying connected with the local market, like with Kina and, and, and the people that you know within your, your network. I can't stress that enough that you have to stay connected because you can't see it all by yourself. And you think if you can't, if you think you can, then you know try try thinking again because absolutely it's not possible to see everything just by staying connected to your network and then other sources of information um it, it will lead you to to a whole world of ideas of what you could do for me pos uh, you know i i'm i'm masterminding with several groups right now just picking people's brain okay what did you see today what's going on because the rules if you guys aren't paying attention if you're not watching the news or you're not plugging in just pay attention. The rules are changing every single day. And that's a, you know, that's a scary thing for a lot of people, but it's a beautiful thing if you really understand that these rule cha rules changes are actually beneficial to people like myself, to investors and entrepreneurs and, 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 and the like, and the, especially for people who are coming up with problems to give solutions to, because there's a ton of problems coming up and this is the time for entrepreneurial minded people, because what we do is we come up with solutions. So if you think, you know, just in the world of real estate, you can tell that all kinds of problems are coming out. That means that there's all kinds of opportunities for problem solvers and solutions. Yeah. So and we do here, even here on Island, there's a lot of different meetups still going on virtually, a lot of masterminds still meeting up. I mean, they're almost competing. Um, on nights, it's 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 hard. You gotta find pick what you want to do. So there is all that. Absolutely, like, and I do want to I do want to put a little footnote on that because there's a ton of information. There's, there's almost too much information out out there, and I'm what I'm saying is that that uh, you know take in a lot of the information, but then be grounded enough in yourself to know what is good for you. See, the definition of intelligence is taking in multiple sources of information, but still being able to function. Okay, so you know, you know, what I was taught is there's always three sides to every coin. There's the heads, there's the tails, and there's the edge. So with all the information that you're taking in, it can be confusing, it can be scary to oh, which one's the right information, which one's good. But that the more you do it, then you just start to see, okay, well, this side has this, these are pros and cons about this, this is the pros and cons about this. This is where I stand, you know, in, in reference to those things. So um, don't don't necessarily i mean don't even take my advice just you know 100% make sure that you take in all the all all the information and then determine what's the best for you uh, which way you want to go don't you know I, you know in my opinion i wouldn't even follow robert kiyosaki 100% in everything he says because you know working alongside of him he's not 100% uh, you know perfect on everything he's he's failed he's made mistakes and that's just part of the game you know so um Understand that there is no one foolproof way to go and that you can take in multiple sources of information to find out what's the best for your particular situation. Uh, yeah, so he does have a great podcast um, that is another another way to get educated. There's several really good podcasts. I enjoy Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad Radio. So let's go back to cash flow. If, if people wanted to get involved in that, and, and like me, who just kind of walked in a coffee shop one day and said, yeah, I'll try, because you can try things you normally wouldn't try in, in real life. I'd never buy a car dealership. That's just not me. But I did it cash flow. <laughs> the look on Ron's face. <laughs> so I went into debt. But so if they wanted to get involved in something like that, can they do that now? Can they do it maybe when our stay-at-home restrictions are lifted? H how can they get involved? Well, you know, you could actually play cash flow at richdad.com. You could you could play it virtually online. The, they have an ele electronic version. You just set up an account, and then you're good to go. You can start playing the game. Um, uh, I, I really love the fact that, you know, people can do that because right now with the lockdown and the social distancing, it's kind of a challenge to get together a physical live game, which, um, you know, when, if and when those eventually come out like this year or whenever we can get into groups, uh, I, I highly recommend those. Those are brilliant to, ways to learn. But um, even beyond just playing the game, uh, you know, always educate yourself and find out, you know, what else you can learn, you know, especially like even myself, um, you know, some of the things that I've been doing is just, you know, increasing my cash flow by, by you know, 
taking care of some of my my you know the debts that I don't need to have and to hold to to free up some cash flow so that I can use it to 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 invest into further things. Um, so even little tweaks into the things that you're doing right now, um, you know, by playing cash flow or by you know con- you know conferencing with people and meeting with people, um, understanding your situation better could improve your personal cash flow um, and reassessing like where you're at. And again, going back to the whole fear thing, um, if you don't do anything, that to me would be the scariest thing, especially right now with so much opportunity out there. Um, I think one of the biggest tragedies would to would be not to do anything. I, I you know, uh, there is this one square in the cash flow game. It's called downsize, and 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 what basically that means is that you you lost your job, meaning that you don't have a paycheck anymore. And you're out of the game for, you know, for, for two turns. And he, uh, the, the, the thing about it is I noticed that people who don't understand the game, they, they tend to do this. <sighs> and they'll stand up from the game and they'll go to the bathroom or to do something like that. But, you know, what's crazy is that you're downsized. You're not dead. There's actually things that you can still do. And I've actually seen people become financially free on the game through the downside square while they were there and 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 that's the thing i want people to understand and to think about that you know in this time where there's a lot of you know downsizing people are losing their jobs and you know it seems like the money is tightening up just understand that there's a lot of opportunity and there's actually a lot more money being becoming available you know, tr- you know, trillions, <laughs> you know, there's literally trillions of dollars becoming more available, readily available uh, for, for people to, to have access to. And if you understand the rules of money, the rules of the game, then, then you'll, these opportunities will become available to you as well and visible to you. Just right now, it may not be visible. Okay, so you also run um, a, a group called Founders. You want to share a little bit about what that is in case there are people that want to, you know, grab that opportunity and. Sure, absolutely. Well, th- I thank you for promoting the group. The founders are, are, is actually a group of, uh, of, of students of mine that, do, that formed games and their job was actually to form cash flow games around the island. Um, right now, none of the games are going on, obviously. But, uh, you know, if you are interested in a cash flow game, a live cash flow game eventually, um, we do hold the, the cash flow games around the island. Kina actually has been uh, part of the whole uh, endeavor and had cash flow games at her office. So, you know, we're looking forward to eventually having another game over there as well. So stay in contact. Definitely, you know, contact Kina to stay in touch with the founders and, and the, the, the things and events that we're doing uh, here on island. So, all right, and Gaia, you, you did tell us that you, you've been to several different countries. I always think it's so exciting. Um, where, where do you go next when this is lifted? Do you guys have anything planned? You know, the beautiful thing about living the cash flow game in real life is that you have your time and your decision making back in your control. So, um, you know, I, I haven't had a boss in, you know, more than 12 years. And, and so I get to determine where I want to go. I have been thinking about that. Um, I, you know, just before this whole, actually when, when it started to pop off in China, I was actually in Thailand at the time. And I was, it's funny because during my event, we were playing cash flow in Thailand. It was the first time I was over there. Um, we were making plans for me to go back there and you know, I was having such a great time there. And I even asked them, I said, you know, are you guys worried about this whole virus thing coming over here to Thailand? And they said, no, Chinese people don't like to come here. <laughs> and <it's> because it, <laughs> it was really just in China at the, at the time. Um, and this was uh, mid-January. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would love to go back over there. Uh, you know, obviously I still fly out to Peru and Central America. I have, I, I have choices to go out to uh, Europe as well. Um, but you know, interestingly enough, I've, I've really been enjoying just staying home <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's just given me an opportunity to rethink like my whole travel situation and, and strategy, you know, even myself, because a lot of my business was based on, you know, connecting with international people and, and doing business internationally. Um, this virus has gotten me to rethink my strategy of how, how else am I going to continue and keep on going? And the beautiful thing of, of, that I learned from this was 
because the rules are always changing, when the rules change, can you change? You know, a lot of people are so stuck in the way they were doing things and the way that they, they ran that they don't have that flexibility to change. And that's something that I would love to promote through the show. If that's a concept that you can understand that, you know, the rules are always changing. So you and yourself, especially as an investor, as an entrepreneur, you must change. And by change, I don't mean freezing or fleeing. I actually mean by taking more action and, and, and seeking out more information and doing more things. And, and don't be afraid to make mis mistakes. I'm, I'm not saying going, going out there and fail big financially, but don't let the fear of the mistakes that you make stop you because those are some of the best you know, learning lessons. All right. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know, Kina, I think this is a wonderful thing that you're doing this podcast. Please, you know, uh, stay tuned to, to information like this, these kind of podcasts, these kind of things that, that uh, entrepreneurs like Kina are, are doing are so valuable. Um, you know, these, these are the times that for the majority of people, it's really, really scary. And, and it's true. The, the, these economic times, these financial times will hurt the majority of people. And the reason why it will hurt the majority of people is because those people are, are panicking, they're freezing, they're fleeing, and they're not doing anything. But for the people in the know, this is actually, this can be, you know, some of the best times. And that's why, you know, I highly encourage everybody who's listening to this to continue to educate yourself, can continue to, to seek out knowledge and to learn and to at least be open to what information, uh, what opportunities, what deals are out there because it's, you know, the, the cash flow game in itself is not just about cash flow, it's about deal flow. How many deals can you be looking at? How many deals can you be in? How many deals can you be, you know, um, accessing at the time? So just by constantly looking at deals, um, that's how you can stay active and, and, you know, productive in this whole situation. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And we're going to go ahead and close. I will see all of yours again in, in two weeks. We have a master at syndication for multifamily homes is going to come talk to us about how things are going in, in that side of the business. If you are thinking of in, investing in multifamilies, um, he's got quite a few doors and is going to share with us where, where they're at with all of that. So again, thank you so much. And I will see everyone in a couple weeks. Aloha.